Good morning. How is everyone today on this not so sunny day? <laughs> Everybody ready for real spring to actually come? Yeah. It was snowing this morning. Yeah. I, Kyle's like, it was snowing. And I'm like, no, it's not. What are you talking about? We walk outside. I'm like, oh, you were right. It is snowing. Yuck. Anyway. Okay. We are going to begin worship this morning. I invite you to stand with me. Um, and even though it's snowing, even though it's muddy and gross, there's still things and wonderful things to praise God for. And that's why we're here. Brayden, we're going to sing great things. You got to turn the volume up on the iPad, please. We might have to on the side button. There you go. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. Our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, dear, oh, heaven, you come with the rain. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great. Your name lifted high, oh God, you have done many things. You've been faithful through every storm, you'll be faithful forevermore, you have done great Your promise is yes and amen. You will do great things. God, you do great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the day. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We bless in your freedom.
moment I see you shaking your head in disgrace I can read the disappointment written all over your face here come those whispers in my ear saying who do you think you are looks like you're on your own from here this grace could never reach that far But in the shadow of that shame Beat down by all the blame I hear you call my name Saying it's not over And my heart starts to beat so loud Now drowning out the doubt I'm down but I'm not out There's a war between Guilt and grace And they're fighting for a sacred space that I'm living through Grace wins every time Come on, lying down in death's defeat Now I'm rising up in victory Singing hallelujah Grace wins every time We can't describe the way it feels Turns what guilty soul But in the shadow of that shame Beat down by all the blame I hear you call my name Saying it's not over My heart starts to beat so loud Now drowning out the doubt I'm down but I'm not out There's a war between Guilt and grace And they're fighting for a sacred space that I'm living through Grace wins every time No more lying down in death's defeat Now I'm rising up in victory Singing hallelujah Grace wins every time For the prodigal son Grace wins for the woman at the well. Grace wins for the blind man and the beggar. Grace wins for always and forever. Grace wins for the lost out on the streets. Grace wins for the worst part of you and me. Grace wins for the thief on the cross. Grace wins for the world that is lost. And they're fighting for a sacred space But I'm living proof Grace wins every time No more lying down in death's defeat Now I'm rising up in victory Singing hallelujah Grace wins every time of grace in all, each of our lives. I'd like you to read with me from Psalms 130. I had it pulled up and then I did. I cry out to you from the depths, Lord. My Lord, listen to my voice. Let your ears pay close attention to my request for mercy. If you kept track of my sins, Lord, my Lord, who could stand a chance? But forgiveness is with you. That's why you are honored. I hope, Lord, my whole being hopes, and I wait for God's promise. My whole being waits for my Lord, more than the night watch waits for morning. 
Yes, more than the night watch waits for morning. Israel, wait for the Lord. Wait, we're going to change that to lakeside. Lakeside, wait for the Lord, because faithful love is with the Lord, because great redemption is with our God. He is the one who will redeem Israel from all its sin. Amen. We are going to sing the song, In Christ Alone. drought and storm, what heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. Took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe. This gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones He came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the love of God was magnified for every sin on him was laid here in the love of Christ I live there in the ground his body
how broken, how hurting. What a mess we were before we knew Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I feel like God just gives us these little moments of um, reminders of, to give us humility in that, right? And if we don't pay attention to those as Christians, we could fool ourselves into thinking that we're better than others. <laughs> but we're really not. So, Pastor Kyle, come. Um, we're ready for the sermon. Yeah. We're going to do an annual report. We're going to do our report now for our annual report. We love, we are kind of a team and so when we do team things we try to do our best possible so that means that we're doing our team thing with post-it notes <laughs> this is how we work sometimes we'll see how this goes but here I want to I want to start with this um, this morning we were uh, in our Bible book of the Bible study um, uh, with Jen and Jimmy were up there and we were going through Philemon which is just a one one chapter little book um, it's just a little connection point for Paul to Philemon, who was a part of the Church of Colossians. And so he was just, he wrote this letter to them. Um, and inside of it, at the beginning, he says this. He says, I pray that your partnership in the faith might become effective by an understanding of all that is good among us in Christ. I have great joy and encouragement because of your love since the hearts of God's people are refreshed by your actions. And so I thought that was a wonderful uh, kind of a little start to where we are going forward with this. Our theme and concept has, all, has been, even since we've been here, has been f that we are for Stevens County, um, we are for our community, and that we would do it by loving God and loving others. Um, and we have post-it notes, and I'm telling you, every one of these post-it notes is something that shows uh, something that Lakeside together has done or people who have done things um, that, has, that have been a part of all of these wonderful ways that they are connected to our community. Mind so. you, I promise we've forgotten some. Yeah, we haven't got them all. <laughs> there are some. So uh, do you want to go first? Sure. So last year, um, we had an amazing Easter week. We had our first Monday. Well, I don't know if that was our first one or the second one. Second one. I think it was the first one since COVID. Mm -hmm. um, but Monday Thursday slash Good Friday service where we came together and ate soup and fellowship mm -hmm. and bread, much like Jesus did on Passover, right? Before Good Friday. And um, walking through that last week before Jesus's death and resurrection. I, that, there's a lot of times in the church where things can, are easy and lighthearted and encouraging. Um, but I think that's such an important time too. So we remember where we've come from. Um, but last year we also had our weekly, highest weekly attendance of the year, didn't we? No. No? no? Okay. Well, we had an egg hunt the day the before Easter. The egg hunt was awesome, though. It, it was, was really so cool. fun to serve our community in that way. You so. guys don't have to hide. You're <laughs> fine. We're just glad you're here. Um, so we had our Easter egg hunt. We had about 50 adults and kids yeah. and teenagers who came. And it's so fun doing an Easter egg hunt here because it actually is hunting because we can put eggs in the woods. Yep. She, she thought maybe Easter might be our our top thing, but we do things a little bit different here at Lakeside, right? And we have different times, and our top was in July, or <laughs> not July, June. It was in June, and it was it was really awesome. Uh, but uh, when it was I still tell a wonderful other pastors weekend. and churches that we're kind of the opposite of most churches, where we kind of we have our summer folks that all come back during the summer. <laughs> Most churches we've been in, the numbers they go way down go during the summer. But we all but come back we're the together, opposite, and it's so it's really kind of awesome. fun. Uh, one yeah. another way that we have connect, we connected with our community with a trunk or treat. Uh, we personally did not do one as a church here. We connected with the uh, Friends of Loon Lake Library and the elementary school. And we went to downtown Loon Lake. And the Lake. new creation community. Yeah, church. and the new creation, new 
be a new beginnings oh, church. Oh, new beginnings, my apologies. Um, and we went and were a part of the community trunk or treat. We had three vehicles and a golf cart, um, and it was awesome to see how kids would connect, and it was awesome to see all the kids from the elementary school and just be there and pass out candy and love on kids um, and connect in that way as a church to our community. So that and was gave out stickers. Kids really did. like stickers. So in this next year, I'm going to make some better stickers. It's going to be fun. Um, we have continued to pray for, pray for those in our community who have cancer and have failing health. Heather's one of them. You're on my mind every day, girl. <laughs> That's my drive to work every day is I sit and pray for Heather and Roy, and I pray for Ryan, um, and I pray for Lucas, who has lymphoma, three years old. He's back in the hospital today. Um, his blood counts went down, but I just continue to pray, and if you have family members and um, friends that you know that need prayer, please let us know. We would love to send out prayer requests. One of my coworkers' nieces just found out and had a baby this last weekend. She did not know she was pregnant. So continue to pray for that family. Um, it's Jalissa and her family. Um, yeah, and uh, we also had missionaries that came this year. Uh, Stan and Amy Christofferson, they came and spoke to us about their mission to Croatia. Uh, that was a wonderful, it was wonderful, when, wasn't it two days or was it just the one day? It was just the one day, and it was just awesome to hear where God is leading others uh, to and around the world, not just here in our local community, uh, but to Croatia and to other places like that. Um, another one that's random is Ron Watson. You stopped a wildfire this summer, and we are thankful as a community for what you did. <laughs> <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> that was Val said, that's kind of on your brand, Kyle. You should put, put that well, one. Well, he's like, that's too random for me to do. And I said, no, it's your brand. It's, <laughs> it's normal. You're, you oh, another one? yeah. Um, so so we, got, we had planned, Angela comes to me last year right before Thanksgiving. And like, should we do a Thanksgiving dinner for folks in the church that don't have family that they're going to? And I'm like, yes, we would love to be a part of that because... It's just us here in Washington, um, as far as biological family goes. Um, and then we got COVID. Mm -hmm. for the, that was the second, second time. Second time, and I've had it um, now again. Yeah. So, but they had, uh, I think, about 20 folks. And it was seeing those pictures that week online. Um, it was awesome. And then Ginger kept sending me photos. And I was just like, yeah, you guys are so awesome. And we, yeah, that was awesome. We uh, completed our sign, or the sign is up and going. It's not completed. We're doing that this spring. What we're going to finish off is dedicating that sign and putting some rocks around the base. Um, but uh, it's up. It looks amazing. It was decorated for Christmas, and I want to find some Easter eggs and put some Easter eggs either on the side or on top or whatever, but I, I want to try to see what I can do to decorate We're that. We're so thankful to Jimmy and Dave Dixon yeah. for uh, working on that and helping us get that together. Yep. And to the church district. Yes. Because they helped us pay for that. Um there's no way we could have paid for that on our own. And our church superintendent believes in Lakeside and yeah. believes in our church and what we're doing here. And so he's like, we want to help with that. Um, throughout the year, we've had our wonderful home groups that have been ups and downs. And we've had different things. They've, we've gone on hikes and things that... Um, have brought us together, the home groups. It's been awesome to be a part of a, a Bible study home group, and then we took a little break, and then we had a uh, membership like home group kind of connected that way. The chosen um, thing has been awesome. On the hike, though, it did bring some people together. It did tear others apart. <laughs> <laughs> and then, not literally. <laughs> Angela knows. She's laughing. Um, and then we went kayaking once, yeah. and Camden was not a fan. <laughs> we went a little further than he was planning, but he made it. Didn't you, Camden? Yeah. Yeah, he did great. My arms were, felt really sore. Really sore, but we had um, fun. 
We have been raising funds for two of our wonderful young people to go to NYC in Tampa Bay, Florida, which is coming up in July. Um, they are doing what is NYC NYC is Nazarene Youth Conference and it is a conference that happens only every four years or so uh, the next one will be a three because they're trying to re change the dates because of COVID and get it back on the year that it's supposed to be on um, but it is a wonderful conference where kids come together they see other Nazarene kids and get excited and energized by seeing all of these young people who are youth, who are worshiping God, and that they are in this going in the same direction towards the cross and loving each other in community on a big scale. Um, it, I went when I was a kid in uh, 1995, um, and I went to Phoenix. Grayson went to Phoenix in 2019. And... Uh, so it Peyton, includes service projects in the city that they're going to as well. It's not all just fun and games. This is true. They, um, when the year that I went as a sponsor in 2000 and no, it was like 2007, 2008. Seven. Um, we filled half of an arena with toilet paper and toilet paper for the local food banks and for the local shelters and things. And it was so amazing to see what these we kids did. We went to did. St. Louis, and when we went there, we went to the Edward Jones Dome, and we each person brought two suitcases. One suitcase was for your luggage, but the other suitcase was to be packed with food and, like she said, toilet paper and toiletries and all of these things. And we... We wanted to try to feed 5,000 people inside of the metro uh, St. Louis area, and I think they ended up feeding 1,500 families in that, and so it was way more than what was expected, and it was cool because the kids brought their stuff, but then they all had a time when they walked through and packed boxes to send and pray for those boxes as they would go out. Um, they have different ones for different community times. That when I went, uh, we cleaned up parks in across areas of Phoenix in 125 degree weather. That was not fun, um, but we did it, and it was a part. We did some wonderful interaction with kids. It is a life changing event, or at least it's a once in a lifetime event where you get to see what God is doing, and it's an awesome thing. Um. We, Angela, Alyssa, Kyle, and I, uh, went to District Assembly last year. We did. And District Assembly is a really unique and interesting time because it's, it's easy to think it's just us up here in, this, in our little church in the woods, right? Um, but the Church of the Nazarene does so many things worldwide where we think that just the little bit that we give for alabaster isn't going to do much, but alabaster giving um, does incredible things across the world to build schools and churches and all kinds of things. Um, we hear at District Assembly, we heard about different stories from general superintendent, from missionaries, from pastors all across the district. So it was really a fun, amazing time. One of the things that will always stick in my heart, though, that weekend was getting to worship with my Spanish brothers and sisters in Christ here on this district in both English and Spanish. Alyssa and Angela, that was so powerful, wasn't it? It was just, I had no idea what I was saying, but it was so powerful and it was so incredible. So anything um, else you can the think of? The last one that I can think of is that um, we are a, an amazing, we have an amazing relationship with our Loon Lake Elementary School. Um, it helps, and I get to be a part of that on a personal level to get to be a paraeducator in the resource room now. Uh, we had prayed for that for a couple of years to happen. Um, but for the last, for a long time, but at least for the last couple of years since COVID had shut us back down, um, we have helped with our... Uh, Christmas for kids. Um, we called it Giving Christmas. And uh, last year, I think we had 12 families and it stretched us and we were like, that was a lot. Um, and I went in and this year and I talked with the, the counselor and with our principal uh, and 
we ended up with 17 families this year, uh, which was tight and it was hard, but it was what, it was that connection. We provided not only just presents or things that kids wanted, but we, we helped with the needs with um, gloves and hats and jeans and haircuts even, um, and just the needs that these kids desperately needed. Uh, for 54 out of 108 of our kids in our elementary school. And that is what our, that's what Lakeside is. And that's our heart of who we are. Um, and it was a lot, but the blessings come. And what a wonderful thing to hear um, John Twitchell uh, talking last week and uh, just to have that wonderful blessing that I did not know of until you heard of it, um, that we, uh, that he had someone that wanted to help donate some money towards that and donated $500 towards the beginning stages of how that goes. Um, and so we are thankful for that. So we are, we are blessed and thank you for the way that you connect together with each other, but also with our community. Um, and that is our pastoral report for this year. We do have one more report. Dave, it's his turn. <laughs> so um, last year, Alyssa, Angela, Mary Lois, and Dave were our church board. And um, Mary Lois, um, it was time for her to take a break, which we are so thankful for her. Um, but Dave continues to serve as our church treasurer. Um, and he's going to tell us a little bit about that. Sorry, you have a microphone. You're good. I'm not going to tell you it's fun being a treasurer because that's just putting numbers on a piece of paper. But uh, it's fun to see what God does. That's the fun part. Um, I was able to share last year and to share again this year. Um, there's a story in the Bible about a guy by the name of Joseph who had an opportunity when he was in the lowest of lows to get an opportunity to go see the king, well, it's Pharaoh, and interpret a dream for him about how there's going to be upcoming seven years of plenty and then followed by seven years of famine. And so God really did a miracle for them, getting them ready and getting them prepared so that when the famine came, all, everything they needed was already there for them. Um, I shared a little bit last year about how we kind of got ourselves in the same spot, except that God didn't tell us in advance. He just did it. And three years ago, COVID hits. And we got faced with three years of famine. And unbeknownst to us, God had already given us three years of plenty. And our bank account was pretty good. In fact, we went through the last three years, and we're doing really, really, really well. The story of Joseph, though, it stops at the end there when it talks about the seven years of plenty and then the seven years of famine, and then the story stops. And we don't really hear any more about what happened after that. And... So we're kind of in a, a dead zone of trying to figure out, okay, now what happens then? Well, that's where we're at. We had our three years of plenty. We've had our three years of famine. And we spent everything that was in the storehouse. And that's where we're at now. So I get to come to you and just let you know that this is where we're, we're, we're back to usual, except that our usual hasn't shown back up again yet. And so we are, we're still... Um, our, our income is, is not exceeding our expenses, and we can't continue that trend. Now, this would be a place where, I, in, when I was growing up as a little kid, that's, that's when the preacher gets up and, and gets a call to, let's dig back into the old covenant and pull out the laws of the tithe and start telling everybody, you guys, if you guys just paid your tithe, you'd be fine. Um, that comes with all kinds of curses and, and problems and struggles, and, and I'm not, we're not going to do that. We're going to stick with the new, tov the new covenant. And what the Apostle Paul says is the, the blessings of giving. And we're not going to go back to, as Paul calls the, the uh, ministry of death, which he calls the law, but life in the spirit. And so we're, I just, my, my goal for you is just to ask the Holy Spirit, what does he have for you to do? How, how, how can you be a blessing to those, not only for us, because you probably have other things you, that you want to give to that, that bless your family. And you need to give to those things. Um, anything, that, anything that brings value to you, you need to support so it stays. If this church brings value, 
We need to support it, so it stays. It's really simple. And so that's all, that's, that's all I would say is listen to what the Lord says. Give whatever he puts in your heart so that you can be a cheerful giver. If that's a little, great. If that's a lot, great. It, it, um, at, at, just so you know, as a treasurer, I'm not concerned because this is God's problem. It's not my problem. It's not the pastor's problem. The Lord's called us to be here in the positions that we're in, and it's his responsibility to take care of us. And we're going to look to him to take care of us. The funny thing about him, though, is he always uses others to take care of others. And that's where the fun starts. So I just enjoy, I'm just encouraging you to join us on this great adventure of what we're doing here at Lakeside, what we're doing in our community, and be a part of it. Be a part of it in every single way your heart can and in which ways you can financially. Don't, don't worry about mixing the two. Don't worry about getting dis, disturbed or whatever, by what little we can do, what great things we can do. That, that's for God to take care of. Just listen to what he has for you, and we'll be just fine. Um, as for my report, um, I got all the n numbers. If anyone's interested, I'd be glad to go through the numbers with you if you're a numbers person. I, I don't spend time in my report going through numbers because most people don't care. Um, so if you have any questions, I'm, the books are open. We'll, we make sure we cover every single thing down to the penny. We can be accountable for everything, and I'm happy to, to answer any questions about anything anyone ever wants, anytime. That's year-round, not just this time of year. Year-round, anytime you have a question, come see me. Thank you, Dave. And we do know that God will provide. All right, so last week we had our wonderful uh, Legacy Weekend, and we had Jonathan Twitchell come and be a part of our services, and that was an amazing weekend, and it was awesome. Um, but I wanted to get back to our heart-to-heart -heart conversations, and I wanted to get back into... Uh, this is week four. Uh, I want just the hard thing is, is there was two texts because there was last week's that I missed and then there was this week's. And so um, I'm going to try to do this together. OK, it's not going to be crazy long, I promise. But <laughs> but um, I want to keep us on the right path of where these conversations have been. Um, and so our two texts, which I'm not going to read all of because there's two of them and they are about 40 verses each, and I'm not going to uh, jump, I will jump in and out of both of them. Uh, we'll start with John chapter 9, uh, 1 through 41, um, and then we'll end up in John 11, 1 through 45. Um, so if you want to be in those places, that's great, um, and that'll put us where we are going to go. Um, of course, I want to point out the highlights of these conversations. Uh, the last couple of weeks, we last the week before Jonathan, we played with the balls of understanding how John writes and his conversations of uh, the different uh, scenarios or questions that were asked, the hard answers, the misunderstandings, and all of that. With these texts, we see the difference uh, because of the fact, the first one, it was just so many questions that were going on that there was questions and then there was tried to get answers, but then there was way more questions and so many misunderstandings um, that we can't just kind of go back and forth with the, th the theme or the, the concept there, but we can get and understand where God wants us to go, okay? So I want to look at John chapter 9, and I want to focus on what is happening with Jesus. Um, Jesus had just upset the Pharisees um, and those in authority by claiming that he knew Abraham and that he was before him. And for them, that was a big deal because Abraham, you know, father Abraham, and that they are sons, you know, and all of this. And they're like, how can this be? You're not even 50 years old. Um, and how would you know Abraham? Um, and so they got royally upset with him, and they were about ready to throw stones at him and to try to kill him. And Jesus does the slip. He just is like, I'm out. You know, he takes it off, and um, he just makes his way through. And then the next thing we see is he is walking with his disciples. Um, here is where we come to John chapter 9, verses 1 through 7, and it says this. It says, as Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who was blind from birth. 
Jesus' disciples asked, Rabbi, who sinned so that he was born blind, this man or his parents? Jesus answered, neither he nor his parents. This happened so that God's mighty works might be displayed in him. While it's daytime, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am the, in the world, I am the light of the world. After he said this, he spit on the ground and made mud with his saliva and smeared the mud on a man's eyes, on the man's eyes. Jesus said to him, go wash in the pool of Shalom. Um, so the man went away and washed. When he returned, he could see. The key part of this text for me and for our understanding is inside of that first verse where it says Jesus walked along and he saw a man, right? Um, the disciples, they didn't see this. I mean, they saw him with their visual eyes, but they did not see him the way that Jesus sees the blind man. Because they were quick to point out or to try to figure out whose sin had made him blind, his or his parents. And again, there's just all of these different questions that arise from this action. Jesus spits on the ground, puts mud in his eyes. And as we remember from when we were talking about, um, uh, oh, not um, brain, brain fog, first week of the series, Nicodemus, sorry, Whew, had to get that name, <laughs> when, when we, when we talked about Nicodemus, he was that strict letter of the law person that walked through the thousands of different rules and all of that, right, so thousands of rules, yes, spitting on the ground, making mud and putting it in someone's eyes was considered work on the Sabbath. And it was considered healing on the Sabbath, which was work again. But are you kidding me? Mud in someone's eyes? Y you're going to nitpick that away? Or the fact that healing and if you are one who is a religious authority, you're going to tell me that, re that healing can't happen on the Sabbath? He receives his sight. And what happens next is the, the blind man goes to his neighborhood. He sees his neighbors, and they cannot believe who this is. They're like, wait, what? He's blind. This can't be him. What? This isn't him. And the blind man says, yo, hey, it's me. I promise, it's me. Um, so then they're like, who did this? And he said, well, the, the man who came, um, he healed me. And they asked, where is he? He says, I don't know. He, he healed me, told me to go to the pool, wash my eyes off, and then I came home. And he was healed. Here we see that the blind man sees Jesus as just someone who is a person. He is a person that has healed him. He doesn't understand what is really kind of going on with him. But he sees Jesus in the light of just a man who put mud in his eyes and said, go to the pool and be healed. The blind, ma blind man starts to wonder about this man because he healed him. He, he was not thinking that he was a sinner. But here's the thing. The people of the neighborhood, they decided to say, we should go to the Pharisees. We should go talk to them. And we should figure out who this guy is or where th this guy is because we need to like talk to him. And when they went to the Pharisees, they said, wait a minute. Of course, he's doing this on Sabbath. He's a sinner. This isn't good. And so this, this guy's a sinner. And that's what they the Pharisees told him. He's like, wait, I don't think so. He says, I don't think he's a sinner. And he starts to change his concept of who Jesus is. Instead of just being a man, he says, 
well, he has to be a prophet, and there's no way that he is a person who is sinning. And so it changes his concept of who he has been with or been connected with. It was Jesus. So he had gone from just this random man to now to, oh, he's a prophet. He's someone who healed. There's no way that he is a sinner. The rulers, though, they decide that they want to become super sleuths. They want to be like the extreme um, Sherlock Holmes of the Bible at the moment, and they wanted to start questioning everybody who was a part of the story, right? They question the man. They ask him, and they're like, uh, that's not enough information for us. So we're going to go to your parents, and we're going to go talk to them, right? And when they went to the, his parents, they were like, wait a minute. We weren't there. Yes, this is our child who was born blind. We don't know how he like, got healed. And the fact is, is that he's of age, so you can talk to him, right? It's like me saying, eh, go talk to Grayson. He's an adult. He's 18. He's a kind of off to college, right? So they're saying, hey, go talk to him. These parents didn't want to be a part of this situation because there are ramifications to all of this. And the ramifications can mean that they would be kind of excommunicated from like the temple or from the area to be worshiping. So they come back to the blind man, probably going, we got to go back to him and we got to talk to him again. And they ask him again, so what really happened? And the blind man starts to think they don't know what they are talking about or what they are doing. He starts to move even further into his relationship or understanding of who Jesus is. Um, and the fact is, is that here's where we get some of Angela's attitude here. We get some snarkiness. <laughs> he says, really? I have to tell you this again. Why? Why? Do you want to become a disciple of his? And the rulers literally shun this man, right? They kind of accuse him. Oh, you're his disciple. He's like, so what if I am? You want to become one? That's why you need to know exactly what I told you already what happened. But they shun him. And then they throw him out. They excommunicate him from doing the things that a normal good person would be able to do and worship. But this is where Jesus shows up again, right? Jesus finds the, blind, the man who was born blind. And in verse 35 through 38, this is the interaction that happens. Jesus heard that they had expelled the man born blind. Finding him, Jesus said, do you believe in the human one? He answered, who is, who is he, sir? I want to believe in him. Jesus said, you have seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. The man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped Jesus. Here again is this change from the blind man who had now has his sight, changing his relationship with Jesus from, I, I don't know who it was, but it was this man who healed me, to a change and understanding of he is a prophet. He, he's not one who's doing this out of sin or doing this to try to rebel. He's a prophet. Has consequences thrown upon him from the rulers of the day. And Jesus still comes and walks alongside. That's when it becomes something that goes deep into who he is. The man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped Jesus. He, Jesus became his Lord at that moment. The change wasn't when he got his sight back. The change was when Jesus continued to walk alongside and see him through the hard and struggling times. From being expelled from the temple to believing in Jesus as Lord and worshiping him. This man received more than just his physical sight, but sight to see the true light 
and worship him. Jesus thus proceeds to take things on his own time, and he gets out of his place because those murderous threats, that anger starts to build even more in this place, right? He keeps doing the things that are upsetting the apple cart or whatever. The he just makes things happen. But then his really good friend falls ill. This is tough because this story is Lazarus, right? And we know a little bit about Lazarus's relationship with Jesus, right? He, well, Jesus had to wrestle with going back to Judea and being there for his beloved friend, Lazarus, or staying away from the threats and letting him be. Sometimes when we are faced with really hard decisions or really hard complications that are a part of our lives, it takes us a little bit of time to process, right? And it's okay to process what God is doing or how he is going to work. And I think, yes, Jesus took his time on purpose, um, but again, he takes things in his own way. He waits two whole days, and since he is seeing, since he is seeing more than the others understand, he decides to go back. This is the one of the biggest choices that he makes. He could stay away, continue his ministry, and keep going forward and keep seeing wonderful things happen and keep moving. But instead, he makes this choice to say, I'm going to go back and I'm going to go see Lazarus. Going and seeing Lazarus leads to a crescendo of events leading to the cross. He finally makes his way to go see his friend, um, but he is addressed with a question uh, when he gets there. You healed a random blind man, but you couldn't keep your good friend from dying. He was late in their eyes, and it was a sad, sad time. John eleven seventeen through 37 says this. It says, when Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was a little less than two miles from Jerusalem. Many Jews had come to comfort Martha and Mary after their brother's death. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him while Mary remained in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Even now, I know that whatever you ask God, God will give you. Martha replied, or Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Martha replied, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though they die. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She replied, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, God's son, the one who is coming into the world. After she said this, she went and spoke privately to her sister Mary. The teacher is here and he's calling for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to Jesus. He had entered the village but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were comforting Mary in the house saw her get up quickly and leave, they followed her. They assumed that she was going to go mourn at the tomb. When Mary arrived where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. When Jesus saw her crying, and the Jews who had come with her were crying also, he was deeply disturbed and troubled. He asked, where have you laid him? They replied, Lord, come and see. 
Jesus began to cry. The Jews said, see how much he loved him? But some of them said, he healed the eyes of a man born blind, but couldn't he have kept his really good friend, Lazarus, from dying? Jesus was deeply moved in a way of like losing a best friend or a brother or sister or a father or mother. He was moved in a human way, and he cried. Now Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. He says, come out of the tomb. Now come. It was so moving for those who witnessed it. Many came to follow him. Others didn't know what to do with it. So they went to the Pharisees. After these conversations, these actions, it put into place the movement towards that which Jesus knew was going to happen, that it would lead to Palm Sunday, and it would lead to the last days of his life. Sometimes we might not understand what is happening when the Holy Spirit is moving. Just like some, like the blind man, didn't understand Jesus and him seeing him. But he does see us. Jesus sees us. Sometimes we might think that God is not on time with answering our pleas, our prayers. We might have questions of why or why not. This could have happened in a better way, God. Why didn't you change this situation? And I want you to know, it is okay to ask questions and to seek out heart-to-heart conversations with God, with others around us, to know what is going on, to understand. That is why we are together as a community of believers, to love on each other, to ask questions, to seek and to understand the love of God and to walk in it in all that we do. It's not easy. It's hard. We struggle with things that bring us down. We are human bodies. We are frail. But please know that it is okay to ask questions and to seek out those heart-to-heart conversations. We should be open to what God might say to us and what different life-changing things that he might call us to. Would you pray with me today? Father, I thank you for this Lenten season. I thank you for the heart-to-heart conversations that we have seen throughout Scripture from Nicodemus and the woman at the well. We see this conversation with the blind man and how it leads to a more deeper understanding for him of who Jesus is from a man to becoming his Lord. And we also see that Jesus struggled. He struggled with decisions to be made and where to go and how to walk forward with those. But he also struggled with the friendships and the loves that he had. And he struggled with heartbreak. I pray that you will be with us. That again, Father, that you would help us here at Lakeside to seek out the questions and thoughts that you want us to have, to have heart-to-heart conversations with each other, to have heart-to-heart conversations with you, Father. But we, that we would be open to life-changing things that you have for us. We love you and praise you today in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Today has been a wonderful day. We gave our report. We heard a little bit more of these wonderful conversations, heart to heart, about a blind man and about Lazarus and Mary and Martha. Um, 
we will get to celebrate together and eat food together as a community. And so um, do you want me, is there anything? Um, I just was, would ask that if we could get some help taking down chairs in the back and getting tables set up. And then there's two long tables here that we need food put on that need to be taken out to the foyer and set up. Um, and then, yeah. Just, just remember we have uh, the, the chosen Bible study is tonight at 5. Tonight at 5. Yeah. Yep. And uh, the Easter egg hunt is coming up. And so if you have candy, we would like candy to be here for donation by April 2nd and to be a part of that. Um, so, um, so the benediction will be a prayer blessing for our food. How does that sound? All right. So, Father, I thank you for this day. Thank you for the time that we get to sit down and fellowship together. I pray that you will bless this food to our bodies in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go and eat.